r slash pro revenge. Oh escort stole my dogs and the cops won't help. So I hunted her down myself. So it all started on Sunday the 26th of May. I was flying back home from Texas where I was at my girlfriend's sister's wedding. We had a layover in Vegas before our one hour flight back to Sacramento. I land in Vegas and I get reception that's when my roommates call me and tell me how the door to our backyard gate was busted open and my beautiful husky Wolf mix was missing. That dog is everything to me. She is 3 years old now and I've had her since she was 2 months old. She's been with me through all my breakup my layoffs and my evictions. She was my only friend when all my other friends believed the rumors my ex said about me. Anyways she is gone and I get home to start doing the usual putting up flyers offering a reward and notifying every shelter, vet, and her chip company of her disappearance. I put notices on every lost and found page and suddenly it starts to go viral on Facebook. A lot of people really wanted to help me find my dog and I had eyes everywhere. I wake up one day to a Craigslist ad with a picture of an unknown girl hugging my dog with the ad titled found husky sent to me by a friend of mine. So I contact the ad maker. The lady was nice and explained how she didn't find my dog but a friend of hers on IG found her. She watched her post pictures on IG and brag about how the universe brought me this beautiful beat. She sent me screenshots of her Instagram and all the pictures she posted of my dog. She then tells me I don't know her personally but she is a fellow escort. It turns out the girl who has my dog is an escort. So she messaged the girl to tell her that she found the owner of the dog and she full deletes all posts about my dog and blocks the AD maker. So I think alright. This is already viral. Game on beach. I get all the people who have been searching including my detective aunt and we make a hunt. I file a police report and they are down to bust the chick but I have to find where she is and holding my dog for them to do anything. Which is pretty useless. I get people to start contacting one another we found her legal name all the addresses she is tied with including her boyfriend mom stepdad possibly dad and stepmom's info. We even found two warrants for her arrest. She was charged with petty theft, hit and run involving property damage, lying to a peace officer and possession of contraband. After I found that info including her being an escort, which is illegal where I'm from, we had her. I dug up all her info including emails and phone numbers with her escort phone number. So I call this woman to confront her and she starts yelling at me about how I'm harassing and threatening her. This is the first time I've ever talked to the woman. And how she was going to press charges on me. She then said she brought my dog to her shelter. She also told me which shelter. Two days prior. I confirmed that wasn't true. Meanwhile I'm gathering all the proof I have that this dog is mine which is 3 years of timestamp photos with me and the dog and the chip information that my dog is registered with and her being in my name with the chip company. She is told this and still refuses to give her back by saying I'm afraid to give the dog back because the owner is threatening me. Which I never did and have proof of that. So now she is on blast on Facebook, Instagram and Reddit as well. I'll provide with more edits later. Update. So I'm not sure what more I can really do. The court fees to even try and get this beach is gonna break my bank and I already spent over a grand trying to find my dog. Then even trying to find and serve her with the court may not work because the cops will only try three times before they say welp you're on your own and then I would have to hire a private investigator. I'm not sure what to do besides blast her so goddamn hard this ends up on every news station and radio station in the Sacramento region. Update again. Ooh 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 so check this shit out. The girl that stole my dog was with another girl when they found my dog. And boy does the plot thicken. They are both escorts. So the girl that stole my dog let's call her blonde thief and the girl she was with we will call her red haired thief. Blonde thief left for San Francisco to work. She came back home early to find red haired thief was sleeping with blonde haired thief's boyfriend. And it gets better mate. Red haired thief beat blonde haired thief's ass which involved the cops and a public police report. Boyfriend was taken to jail for domestic violence and so did red haired thief. Now that that is public record I looked up the incident. Sadly there was no house address when I looked it up. I'll keep you updated. Final update. The red haired thief contacted me and told me the blonde haired thief took my dog to her dad's house. So I went detective and looked up who her dad is. I got his legal name Facebook and phone number. I get a car with a beefy friend of mine and drive one hour to Valley Springs to where her dad lives. 
We pull up to the property and there is my dog running up to the fence to greet Emmy. I open the gate and she tackles me. I put her in the car and call the cops. They arrive and do their damnedest to get him to answer the door. But the police chalk it up to him not being home. They take my statement and I explain everything down to each fine detail including the escort in question having a record. They said they will be catching him and I will be pressing charges for animal endangerment and grand theft. She will also be adding a third warrant on her record. So glad it's over. And my dog is so happy to see my again every day. The next day I get a message from my friend. Turns out the thief sent her a message on Instagram about contacting the police over me harassing her. My friend then commented you do realize the owner came to your dad's house and took her dog back while the police watched it happen? She told the police she is pressing charges on you and they are coming for you. Enjoy jail and the thief flipped. She started threatening my friend and saying she's gonna fight her before calling her a faggot like in all seriousness hasn't she had her ass beat up enough this week? TL. Doctor don't duck with my dog. A client refused to pay. So I had some fun. When I have the time and come across interesting projects or clients, I take on one-off assignments to create websites, graphics, applications, etc. For said clients, I recently had a client for whom I created a website. Their old website looked like it was created in the early 90s, but it drew a lot of traffic. So the need to update was clear. Like always, we first agreed on the scope and design. And my client showcased his competitors websites for me, explaining what kind of things he absolutely wanted for his site, but better. As he put it, I then had him sign a standard contract and pay a small upfront fee. Everything went smoothly and I got to work. After the project finished and I sent an invoice to my client, he told me that he won't be paying anymore. During the few days that I had worked, he had watched some YouTube videos about creating websites and he had come to the realization that he, without any prior experience in web design or programming, could create an equally impressive site in pretty much the same time as I had, and so he didn't feel like he should pay me anything extra. I reminded him of our contract and he flat out said that I am free to take him to court. But he won't be paying me. Obviously I had no intention of taking him to court because it would result in more headache than it would be worth. But I wasn't just going to let this slide. The website was already live and teeming with visitors. But my client, although they were a newfound web design professional, hadn't realized that I was still the only one who had access to the site's back end. Which meant that I could make any changes to the site and he couldn't do anything about it. So, I remembered how he had told me about all of his competitors' websites. I figured the appropriate response would be to write a script that replaces his company's contact details and opening hours with those of his competitors. Every time the site would load, the script would randomly show one of the competitors' contact details instead. I also made it so that the contact form requests would be sent to a randomly selected competitor's email. I chose not to inform my client of this and went on to enjoy my vacation. Within a week, I received several emails and a call about my client's concerns that something was wrong. That he hadn't received a new client through the site in almost a week even though the site's visitor count is much higher than before. Thanks to the new design and improved SEO that he hadn't yet paid for. I let him know what I had done and I told him that I would undo it. But it would take me about an hour. For which I would be charging. Since I was on vacation, I'd apply the rush fee stated on the contract for that hour. And of course, I told him that this would all be added on top of the original fee that he owed me, plus interest for late payment. Naturally, this led to insults and threats being thrown in my direction, to which I calmly responded that I will begin work once I have the money on my account and if he doesn't want to lose any more customers to his competitors, he'd best man up quick. He tried to call me immediately and I just declined the call. After the second attempt to call me again, I sent him directly to voicemail. I received an express payment to my account the very next morning. Edit 1. Added details below about the legality of the situation that some have asked about. The client's old 90s styled website was running on a similarly outdated legacy hosting package. As such, I had convinced him to update his hosting provider in the process. So, I had paid for the hosting and set up the new site on that server. I did not touch the old site at any point. After I was done with the site, I showed it to the client who was happy with it and told me to redirect his domain to the new server. To do this, 
He gave me the login details to the site where he hosted his domain. I logged in, redirected the domain and logged out. Then, after it came clear that my client hadn't paid me and told me that they wouldn't pay me, all I did was modify the code that I had written. That was on the server that I had set up. That the contract stated would be my property until the final payment was made. As my client didn't pay, I merely edited code that I owned. On a server that I owned, he could have gone and redirected his domain back to his old server at any point. But, even after his newfound web development expertise, didn't know or care how to do. The only thing that was illegal was my client refusing to uphold the contract and pay me for the work that I had done for him. Edit 2. The contract had a clear section concerning rights and responsibilities of both parties, as well as clauses for what would happen and various scenarios such as work not being carried out, client not paying in time, client wanting to terminate the contract or client refusing to pay, and what constitutes as refusal to pay. Refusal to pay would mean that the rights and ownership are not transferred to the client and that I may remove the site and any files and software I have associated to it, as well as modify the site as I see fit, such as replace the site with a simple under maintenance banner. Granted, I should have waited until the client had told me that they wouldn't pay me or until I would have seen the payments to redirect the domain for the client. Had I done that, none of this would have happened. When he told me that he wouldn't pay, I reminded him of the section and the clause in the contract, which he brushed off. After this, I wrote the scripts. Sure, I am not proud of what I did and I could have handled it better, but this lapse of judgment got the better of me, and while I am not proud of what I did, I am happy that I was paid what I was legally owed. Nice to know it worked well for you. Hope you learned a couple good lessons here. Don't ask for small advance payments. 50% upfront. That's it for small projects. The bigger the project, the smaller the risks for you on this side. So you can lower your upfront percent there. Also it's a lot more money involved. So you still end up with a good amount of cash as guarantee. Also you can charge 30% 3 times while your project advances. Always take the keys until you receive the final payment. No payment. No product. Add to the contract that in case they refuse the order in the end, you are free to offer what you had done so far to their competitors. Be careful with abusive NDAS at this point. My revenge story almost killed a man. About 3 years ago, I was working in a pretty big factory. They hired through 5 different temp services, so the place was pretty much like a revolving door. People came and left without any warning. Sometimes it was hard just to find a familiar face. So when someone started stealing my lunches everyone became a suspect. After falling victim to the lunchbox bandit for a week straight. I'm talking about 6-12 hour days with no lunch. Needless to say the frustration spawned several evil plans. But I felt the Carolina Reaper would give me the fastest and most effective results. All I know is people were gonna think twice before stealing lunches. I spent all night making the best steak for heaters for lunch the next day. I finally minced the Reaper peppers into a nice pico de gallo. And topped my devil fajitas off. I carefully placed my fajitas into a Tupperware bowl. Garnished them with cilantro and limes. Then covered them with a clear lid to display their beauty. The next morning. About an hour after I placed them in the fridge, a woman started screaming for help. I ran to the lunchroom to find the lunchbox bandit laying on the floor gasping for air. The reaper peppers triggered an asthma attack, and he had to be rushed to the hospital. He never said anything, and neither did I, until now. Ro, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price.